Greetings. Uh, this is the inaugural episode to what will hopefully be a popular series, McKay Rambles. This is going to be an unedited, unscripted, just me shooting the shit at the mic as per requested by my patrons. Interestingly enough, uh, of all the things I decided to put on that poll, I'm surprised that this one pulled ahead in the votes. So hopefully I won't let you down. Uh, I was thinking it might, it took a while for me to uh, decide on a topic for the first one, and I decided on one that I think we all can sympathize with. Um, the utter crapshoot that is Uber drivers. Now, I don't mean to besmirch, I don't mean to besmirch anyone that is, that chooses or is otherwise like kind of forced to work a public transport system that's kind of rigged against them. Uber, by design, is mainly just designed to just put money in the pockets of the uh, the upper ups. It's not like really a uh, it's not a government uh, mandate government mandated. It's it, there's not a lot of like oversight from for government regulations, so Uber can get away with a lot of shit. But you know, I don't mean to besmirch anyone who has to work in that because like. I've had some really good Uber drivers, and that's going to be one of the things we talk about. But, yeah. I've, uh, I've since learned never to get into, get into a car with an Uber driver without my headphones. And we're going to start, and we're going to get into why, because, again, I've had, like, a lot of, uh, I've had plenty of good Uber drivers, and a lot, and, uh, a few of them, like, really were very good were very good conversationalists. There were there were people I actually enjoyed having a dialogue with. But then, but then, there are there is that one. There's one person. Uh, I'm gonna name them. I'm gonna say their name is David to protect the innocent. One day I had to get an Uber for work. I actually have to get Uber like. I have to always rely on Uber for work, sadly. Which, so I've seen a lot of Uber. I've had a lot of Uber drivers, and I don't like to rely on them because, like, it's very like economically unwise to like rely on Uber for work. But the public transport in my public transit system in my in my town is not good. Like where I work now, it's it's faster to walk to and from than to take the bus. Yeah, like. Walking from work now is like an hour and a half. I literally actually just walked back from work. But uh, if I were to take like a bus to or from, it would take two hours because they just like, it goes into like another town, then loops around, like gets you, it gets you like a mile from where my work is. And then I have to take another bus if I, if I was really, uh, really dedicated on not hoofing it. But even that, I'd still have to hoof it a bit. But anyway, uh, for one uh, there was one day at one of my old jobs I had to get I had to get an Uber and David picked me up and for a while for a while things were okay he was just talking to me about uh, where we were going where I worked that kind of thing and then I can't remember how it happened I can honestly for the life of me not tell you if you were to ask me if you were to ask me like how how did you get to this uh, top topic of conversation I literally couldn't tell you. Uh, at some point during our conversation, he decided to shift it to the fact to the to the fact that he didn't personally believe that trans women should be allowed to compete in women's sports. Yeah, so he he was talking to me, a trans woman, about keeping trans women out of sports. Yeah, I have no way of proving this, but. I am fairly convinced he saw the trans pin on my purse and kind of put two and two together and was just looking for an excuse to talk about that. Like, I'm guessing because he wanted to see if I would validate validate him. I don't know why he thought I would. And I argued against him. And here's the thing. I'll just admit this. I did not argue against him as well as I could have because I was like, one, I was, like, humoring this conversation to begin with and not just, like, saying, like, no comment or shut the fuck up, but, like, I didn't present my argument as strongly as I could have. But here's the thing. 
I did not expect when I stepped when I set I did not expect when I stepped into the Uber that day just to take a late night shift at work that I was going to be having this debate. Because if I would because if I was prepared for that, I definitely would be a lot would have been a lot more scathing. And one of his arguments was a personal anecdote about how a cis woman and a trans woman uh, apparently were um, apparently were matched together, like in MMA, I suppose. And his argument is that you know the trans woman had a physical advantage and actually like cracked the uh, the cis woman's skull. And that was his argument, and that was one of his arguments on why cis trans women shouldn't be allowed to compete in cis women sports. And what I should have said to that was, oh no, someone got their ass kicked in the ass kicking sport. I, that's, that's terrible. It's, yeah. And, and for the record, those of you who argue that trans women shouldn't be competing in cis women's sports, shut the fuck up. Testosterone is not some miracle drug, is not some miracle hormone that just makes you into a superhero. I had testosterone flowing through me uninhibited for like 24 years, and I was not, and I was not. And I was by no means fucking Hercules. And I did, and I did like, like soccer like every year. And I was still a fucking like gamey little shit. So yeah, it's not testosterone that, uh, that's the point of topic here. It's your own fucking bigotry. But yeah, uh, I left that, I left that, I got out of that car extremely uncomfortable, eh? uncomfortable, made sure to give that fucker the lowest review I could and for the record I always give five stars and I always give a tip when I can but that just ugh. look if he didn't want if he didn't want uh if he didn't want a trans woman scoring him like with like I, I don't even know if I could have gotten half a star but I would have if I could if he didn't want that he shouldn't have just talked about turf shit he didn't understand to me and yeah, that was awful. So that's like that was like the worst Uber experience I've ever had. On the flip side of that, however, what was arguably the best Uber I've ever had, it's certainly like the certainly one of the most memorable, was Uber Steve. And I rem I remember his name, Uber Steve. And I'm about to tell you why I remember that, because one day, I was getting an Uber from work. I was getting an Uber to work, as I often do. And by this point, after after you know riding with Dave, I made sure to bring my headphones because you know, don't get into an Uber without your headphones. That's just my that's just my motto. If you haven't learned that lesson already, please do. But you don't always have to. Uh, Put on your headphones it, if the Uber driver has made a good first impression and you, actually, and you actually want to talk to them. You don't always have to put them on, but always bring them just in case. And despite the fact that I had my headphones for this particular car trip, I actually did not end up needing them. Because the... Uber Steve, and yes, that was how he introduced me, himself to me, and I'm going to be using Uber Steve like the, the name he gave me because this is actually an endorsement. Uh, he was certainly a memorable driver, if nothing else, because uh, for starters, he had in his car a entire glass jar, like a, like a foot, like a foot tall, like half a foot wide jar of peppermints, and I'm just a absolute slut for peppermint. He had, like, he had, like, a massager on the chair. So I was able to, like, press a button and just, like, and I was like, ooh, okay. And on, like, the, on the uh, door of the car on my side, there was a, there was, like, a homebrew blend of hand sanitizer that was mixed with uh, vanilla and coconut oil. So that on top of, like, you know, just uh, keep my hands clean, it also kept the moisturized and it smelled nice. So yeah, that was all. That was already uh, 
that was already great. But one of the things that left me a bit uneasy, at least at first, was that the guy would not stop yelling. Whenever he spoke, he yelled. It was like, hello, welcome to Uber. My name's Uber Steve, and I'm going to get you to your destination. Safe and sound. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. It was, it was 10 minutes of that. It was 10 minutes of that. It was like 10 minutes of him just like introducing himself, telling me about all the features that he had in the backseat for me to use. And he... And like whatever like little jokes that he could think of to uh, try to entertain me. At that volume, at that volume, at that pitch. For like, it was 10 straight minutes of that. And initially I was a bit uneasy. Because... Just I was like, cause like, oh yeah, the stuff's great and all, but like, you know, I, I, I don't, I didn't really, I wasn't really, I was kind of hoping not to socialize, cause like, I, I, I'm an introvert, like, you know, socializing even for like professionally, like I get for customers, it kind of, it's a, uh, it, it, it taps me out, and I kind of like want to like step in to work for like a full tank, but you know, it's, it's, this, this thing was happening, so it was, it was fine, and. I could have just, you know, put my headphones on and just, like, just told him that I didn't want to, uh, I just didn't want to talk, but something about him intrigued me, so I, I stayed my hand on that, and I was, and I listened to his, his uh, his little barbs just talking about, uh, how new he was. He, uh, he told me he was fairly new to Uber after our, I told him like uh, I I needed Uber to get to work, so like I was uh, I was quite familiar with many Uber drivers, and he asked me uh, who what my uh, what my best and worst uh, what my best and worst uh, experience with Uber was. I didn't answer him directly on that, but he did walk away being at least the most memorable Uber driver I've ever had, if not my favorite, and that's all he wanted. And after a while, I was like, I was like half the way from there to work. I did realize, oh wait, this is a new person. This is this is a person I've never spoken to before. This is a person who doesn't know me personally. And when I met with those people, and I'm, and I'm in a situation where I can either just have a, uh, either have a uh, considerable conversation with them or ignore them, I talk about what I always talk about, my wife. I shared with him uh, the way how Lily and I first met, our uh, vacation in New York together, and the fact that we were married, and what we were hoping to do, and he was hanging on every word, and he was like, wow, that's, I was like, wow, that's amazing, that's amazing that you're married, like, uh, my last, my last date lasted shorter, was, uh, was shorter than this car ride right now. That was, that was entertaining. He, uh, yeah. So, hmm. Yeah, so that was Uber Steve. Uh, arguably the best Uber driver I've ever had. And especially in con direct contrast to Dave, the absolute worst Uber driver I've ever had. And a lot of my Uber experience was just like, well, with well between the uh, the two extremes of Dave and Steve. God, what is it about uh, people named Steve that just makes them so like wholesome and like enjoyable to talk to? Except Steve Jobs, I believe. Fuck him. But yeah, um, yeah, I suppose the only, I suppose the uh, the only. The only other Uber driver I can really, like, remember off the top of my head was the one we had in fucking, in New York when Lily and I were on, were on vacation in New York to go see uh, Carousel. Because I went, while we were there, uh, we decided to hang out with uh, one of my old friends, Vivian. And Vivian had a friend that she wanted to bring along, and we were just, uh, we found a place in, uh, around Times Square where we can, like, have a, have a bite to eat. And on our way back, we all had to like pile into like one Uber. And it was so like, it was like five people in a back seat. And like I had to actually like sit on Lily's lap, which was, which was hardly the worst thing in the world. But yeah, like, 
What made that uh, Uber drive memorable was initially the guy, um, was initially the guy, uh, said, oh, wait, no, this is five people. Like, I, I, I can't, I can't take five people. I was like, I, are you sure? Like, I mean, it's, we can't really, like, divvy it up right now. We're kind of like a set. It's like, I really can't. I was like, I'll tip you extra. And he's like, all right, fine. Yeah, I like that guy because he he was a really good sport. He, that was uh that was an extra that was an extra like percent tip well spent. Good on you, man. Wherever you are. So yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not a personal fan of like the big wigs in Uber. I don't like how uh, shittily shittily they're uh, prepared to treat their drivers. They definitely deserve better. Like if I uh, if it were up to me, I would do a fucking uh, I would do a full fucking like taxi reform on the states. Actually, that's another point I want to bring up. Okay, so at my previous job, it took like the flat rate of getting me from where I currently live to my old job to my previous job was at least twenty bucks, and that was uh, that wasn't including a tip, which I felt you know morally obligated to provide every time. So like. It was usually, like, it was usually, it was, like, at least 25 bucks a day just to get to work, and sometimes 25 bucks, like, to get back from work, because I can't always rely on, um, on, uh, friends or family to, uh, get me home, so I, like, I have to, like, make do, so that's, like, I could have spent, like, $50 a day on Uber just to get back, just to get to, uh, my previous place of working back. Uh, on the flip side, in Halifax where the missus lives, I could get, I could like hail a taxi in Dart, in downtown Dartmouth and then cross the bridge, like from the pier that, uh, that separates Dartmouth from like Halifax itself. I could get, I could like literally cross an ocean, like technically speaking from Dar to get from Dartmouth to downtown Halifax. It would cost me, it, it always cost me like 11 CAD, which is like a buck and a half in real money. Oh, uh, yeah. So, Uber itself, shit company. I wish I didn't have to rely on it as much as I did. I, I would very much like to rely on a, uh, on just a proper taxi service. Maybe at some point in the future, when I move to Halifax, I'll, I'll be able to do that. But, fuck Uber, except for except for the beautiful drivers who have to work it just to like just to get by and thank you uber steve for being memorable okay i just knocked over i just knocked over my pop filter <laughs> okay well uh, i think i think that's going to be it for this one uh let me know though thank you to my patrons for listening uh if you like this uh, if you have recommendations for what you might want to hear next, or if you have any recommendations on how I can, like, improve this, like, little setup, uh, do comment and let me know. Okay, thank you. Toodles!